Digit Lab was set up two and a half years ago. So I think we're the youngest center. So we're halfway through with two and a half years to go. And it's a collaboration led by University of Exeter with Oxford Brookes, University of East Anglia and Royal Holloway and a number of industry partners. So we work to look at digital transformation for digital innovation, growth, and really clean growth, impact, and transformation itself. That figure looks very big. That's because we've got an industry contribution as well as a contribution from EPSRC and the universities. What we're really about is understanding how do we look at digital technologies to generate the next generation of products and services. And this is not a question for technology alone, and it's not a question just about organizations, and it's not a question just about people. So we're trying to bring those together and show you the flavor in a little while. I'll start by, can I just ask all the DigiLab people to stand up so we could just sh show where you are, please? So this is DigitLab. Thank you, everybody. So this, these we have quite a lot of people involved, but beyond our team of academics, we also have our professional service staff, and we also have an excellent team of advisory board with international representation, and a number of what we call Digit Fellows, people from industry who give their time on a non-renumerated basis to reflect on our directions. We have a number of industry partners. They are at different levels. Some have direct engagement. Others are communities that follow us along. So Digit Lab has a number of what we call loosely themes or challenges, mainly around data and AI. That's the main technology that we are looking at. But we are beginning to look at quantum and other questions too. The projects are quite diverse. And I'll give you a little touch point on a few of them. But one is about driving the innovation and understanding what is possible with data and AI for companies. How do you embed digital innovation, both in industry and public services, looking at responsible innovation, and how we scale. So Lab to Leo is one of our themes in there. And we also understand that an organization has to change. So as well as the technology, there's um, knowledge around the impact on the organizations and the business models involved. We are quite cross-sector. So we have some of our partners, we originally had DSTL, but that led to an early project led to a separate center being funded. So that's um, now sort of mainly undertaken in there. We work with the public sector, NHS, social housing, and some work with the police. ProfTech, particularly insurance and finance, for the business models work. And half of our funding is actually from manufacturing the future theme. So it's not just digital economy. So unsurprisingly, we have manufacturing as one of our partners. In food, looking at data exchanges, the built environment, but also products and manufacturing industry, and agritech, both in responsible innovation, but with the Agritech East partnership in part of our work on the test beds. So I'm going to give you a little flavor of some of our projects. First one around the lab to Leo question. So this is around developing technology test beds that enable organizations to quickly test and gain insight before they scale that adoption. And what this looks like is small scale test beds. So there's one that's been made for the agritech sector, but also understanding capability. So within the construction industry, Recent work is looking at the BIM capability and how we can automatically assess BIM capability. So this is the example of the work being done in the agritech industry with a test bed and framework developed and with the construction industry looking at transformation. Some of the challenges that arise are common across them. They're around connectivity, interoperability, how do you motivate people across the value chains? and access, trust, and transparency. The second one of our themes, and third, are around business models and organizational structures. And here, we've been conducting a set of workshops with different industry partners, both SMEs and large organizations, to understand and support the organization in understanding where they are today and how they move forward to where they want to be. And using that to look at both technology innovation with business innovation. 
There's a toolkit that was developed previously that's being adapted in this project. And we hope one of the outcomes will be a business model toolkit tailored for digital transformation, particularly working with data and AI. And this has taken the form of a number of workshops and sand pits with a separate theme, so it's around privacy of data, is data exchanges and data trusts. So this becomes an important question when you're sharing data beyond the single organization. And that's been done with the food industry and also looking at it in a more general sense. In the organizational structure, so this piece of work comes from a very management perspective and looking at the impact on individuals for job crafting, but also the impact of how AI is informing decision making at board level. This piece of work looks at leadership and the organizations together. Our next theme is around responsible innovation and well-being loosely. They're two separate project areas. So the first piece around well-being is an app that's been produced. It's now available on GitHub, and we have done this as open source. So this originally was designed to look at well-being as a form of measurements in LEOs. But it actually has moved since the onset and starting the app. So this has now been tested with a company called Helios in looking at autism assessment. And really what this app is, is a web-based interface that allows other researchers to adopt the various study protocols for their purposes. So there's around 30 labs that have interests, but also for companies to look at how you can do faster diagnosis. So it's really trying to move from things that particularly mental health, which has been paper-based assessments, education assessments in the school, to speed that process up by providing a diagnostics tool. That work isn't complete, but it is currently available. We have another piece of work on responsible innovation. The work has been done in the agriculture sector, looking at how do you look at innovation within the farm and how it's not limited to just the technology adoption, but also needs to consider the context of the knowledge practices, the farming approaches, the relationships of learning and knowledge and exchange. And that's led to a framework which is up here around purpose, practicality and effects, which enable a set of questions to be derived that enable stakeholder discussions to input on thinking about responsible innovation. So although this is uh, one project here, we hope as a centre to learn from that project across all of our themes. The last part of our themes is on digital innovation. And here we are looking at primarily AI and data, but also how we embed platforms of digital innovation for services, and particularly in the public sector. So some of our projects is looking at how we do that next generation of design and how that supports data-driven decision-making so in the product development and design process and data-driven innovation. And lastly, looking at servitized platform models across services. Our approach is human-centered, where we combine design, engineering, and computational methods. And in the servitized model, it's looking at a retrospective case study to understand how we can learn from that case study and apply this to other sectors. The first one is on looking at how servitized platforms can modernize our public service. So Mark Thompson has done this work. We're looking at how you can create a platform business model thinking. So not building the technology alone, but thinking about how you embed digital technology across public services and really looking at how much money can be saved. Mark argues that money savings are in the millions, a billion, sorry, by having a systematic approach to servitizing platform models. And by doing this case study with NHS jobs, he's also been looking at other sectors, such as social housing, to see how we can reproduce the thinking from that NHS jobs into other sectors and learn from that. On the second part is on how we use data to drive innovation of services and products and systems. So we heard the questions about what data is and what data isn't. Our questions have really been around working with industry to understand where is data being used, so which part of a life cycle of a product, so from designing it, from having that product into use and working with users or across industry, and what sort of activities does that inform? 
And the way that we have done this, we carried out a review of 10 years of literature, but literature where the papers were done with real world case studies. So we didn't look at any theoretical data and modeled or uh, mapped that data process at the top and the sources of data. So in that question of what, what is the data, for us is real time data, it's sensors, but it's also data coming from users and documentation. And one of the learnings from us is understanding which type of activities need a combination of data and different approaches. So when is it enough to use data from sensors alone? Or where do you need to use more contextual and qualitative data? And based on that, we've developed an initial framework, which is tested with a number of industry partners, including the foundation industries. And we've currently got a side project where we're now working with the Advanced Manufacturing Research Centre to develop that work, particularly for the manufacturing sector, and to have a framework and a toolkit on data-driven design, particularly for developing physical products. The example you see at the bottom there is one of the case studies that we've been working with. This is C-Sense who make bike lights, but what they actually do is they sell data. And we've been working with them to understand how that data can be used to develop other projects. So for example, they can understand demographical data of usage around London, for example, or whichever cities their bikes are on. And they can understand near misses, which informs planning. So we've run a series of workshops with local authorities and with end users and with the cycling company with these cents to understand how can you predict and use maintenance of planning infrastructure and cycling infrastructure based on these bike lights. And the second study is actually on understanding how you improve people's mental health. So we actually also been working with Ealing Council and other councils across the UK to look at how the data from these lights can be combined with other sources of data to inform about well-being and inclusivity. So although we are looking at the economy, we're looking at driving productivity. We're not doing this just by thinking about money. We're doing this by thinking about people and thinking about society. The last project to show here is looking at the large language models. What we've really been looking at, it's the future of work for designers, for people who design physical products, engineering designers, product developers. And what we've done is collected a data set, which we believe is one of the largest data sets of human data, of creating idea generating. So how do you create ideas? How do we as individuals create ideas? And how does ChatGPT create ideas? And by doing that, we can have an understanding of where large language models can play a role in manufacturing companies. So we've done that both for idea generation, but also something what we call requirements. So what are the needs before you design a product? By doing this, we allow companies to understand where is the value and where they can invest their time in large language models. And right now it's pointing towards requirements rather than ideas. We hope to make this data set openly available quite soon, as soon as we finish, to both researchers from design, but also researchers in design cognition and researchers working with natural language processing as a test set to play with. We've also been running workshops with industry, so with Rolls-Royce, Mitsubishi, Airbus, Leonardo, to understand where there's value and hope to develop case studies with them directly in the industry. There's an overview of some of the projects. There are different lengths. I think on our website, we have all of them available. Since the start of DigitLab, we've had a number of separate projects funded. I think we already mentioned the Defence Data Research Centre that came out with that collaboration with DSTL. So that was after the first few months of the project. We have the Include Network that we're part of. Um, we have work on the finance and passports with the University of Edinburgh. We have that project with AMRC, it's small, but it allows us to generate impact and take our ideas and actually have access to the manufacturing sector with them. We have a separate project which is on transforming health in the southwest with the NHS Cornwall, Somerset and Devon and looking at how we shift services to be patient-centric and a number of other partnerships including international partnerships. So that's a slight overview of our projects. Um, and that's my last slide. Thank you.